I've made quite a few Krunga thumbnails in my time, but one thing I've noticed is there actually isn't a Krunga thumbnail pack. So I figured, hey, I'll just make one myself and make it free and public for everyone to use. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Krunga character render and then turn it into a full YouTube thumbnail to use wherever you want. This pack took me a long time to make. If you're new, please subscribe and remember to like the video. So let's get started. Now to create these thumbnails, we're going to be using two pieces of software, Cinema 4D and Photoshop. So first things first, we're going to be creating a Krunker character render. For this example, we're going to be using Cinema 4D with Absence Krunker Rig. So to download the Krunker Rig, just go to the link in the description and it'll bring you to this Mediafire website. From there, you're just going to click on download, uh, save it wherever you want it, and it should begin downloading. Okay, and once you've saved it, you're just going to right click and extract. If you have a program like 7-Zip or WinRAR, you can use that as well. We're just going to be extracting it normally. And then you should have a bunch of stuff in that folder. And from there, you're just going to be copying the two .lib4d files. And we're going to be putting them in this PC, Program Files, Maxon folder, Cinema 4D, uh, then Library, Browser. And you're just going to be pasting them right in here. As you can see, I already have the previous version. So I'm just going to be deleting those and updating it with a new one. So after you drag them in, you should be ready to go. From there, you can just launch Cinema 4D. Okay, and once Cinema 4D is open, yours might look a bit different to mine, that's all right. We're just gonna be going to Concept Browser, then Presets, then Krunker Rig 1.0. Then just double click on the Krunker guy and he should pop up. And as you can see, we have the model in Cinema 4D. We're just gonna be making some basic adjustments for the actual thumbnail itself. So using the arrow tool, you can move his arms about. And then by clicking on this rotate, you can also rotate the arms if you want it at a different angle. So as you can see, I've put him in a kind of shrugging position, but he's gonna be holding a gun. So the way to add guns is by going back into the original folder, then Krunker Weapons. And for this example, I'm gonna be using the Disintegrator. So we can move it about, you know, put it where we want it. Obviously, we want him holding it. We can rotate the gun, make sure it fits on both of his arms. Moving the legs is very important as you never want a static Krunker character or it just looks kind of boring. So for this example, we're going to be putting him in a crouching position. So the way I like to do this is put one leg back at a 90 degree angle and then the front leg forward. Okay, now if you want to add cosmetics, it's really, really simple. Just click back on the Krunker Rig 1.0 and then you can add on faces, hats, uh, back pieces, you know, stuff like that. And it's all from a drop down menu, which is awesome. We're just going to be adding the smooch face and also cat ears to this example and for the back uh let's go with egg tamer you can also add waste items like the ttv one the sensor one stuff like that and then of course for the shoes we gotta add the yeezys man make him flex a bit you know okay and next you want to add a camera this is so if you make any adjustments you can always go back to the original camera position so the way to do this is by clicking on the camera icon and then add a keyframe and whenever this blue square icon is on, that means you're in the original camera position. If ever you want to make changes, just turn that off and then you can move it around or whatever. And then when I click back to the original blue position, it'll go right back. All right, so now we're going to add a light. Now, light is what creates depth in these Krunker renders. And I would recommend putting this on area. This makes the render a lot cleaner. It gives it more shadows. Then I also like to turn on ambient illumination. This makes the light much more natural, like what you'd see in real life almost. And as you can see on this preview render, there's a lot of kind of patchy black spots. So the way to fix this is by going to the shadow section and then turning up the samples and accuracy. And this should clean up those patchy areas. And also if you want to add a skin, um, you're just going to go to the skin section and press the three dots Go to wherever you saved his pack and then Krunker skins. You can choose whichever one you want. You know, we have the stream suit, which looks kind of nice on this, to be honest. But I think for this, we're going to be using Crimson. Crimson looks really, really clean. So once you have all that ready to go, uh, you're just going to click on the far right clip icon. And in the output section, you can put this at 720 or 1080p, depending on what you're going to be using it for in the final thumbnail. And then on the save section, save it wherever you want. Um, I'm just going to be putting it in the downloads for now. Make sure the format is PNG and also make sure alpha channel is ticked. This allows for an invisible background. So only the Krunger character is showing. That's very important. And then you can render it out and we're ready to go with the actual thumbnail process. So if you haven't already downloaded my Krunger thumbnail pack, it's going to be the first link in the description. I don't know why, but Mediafire takes so long to download. So sorry about that. But yeah, you can save it wherever you want. All right, so once you have my pack downloaded, it'll just be called Epic Krunker Pack. By the way, you can delete this zip file if you want. We're just going to open that up right now. Okay, and once it's loaded up, you'll have three things right here. Here is the thumbnail for the pack. You can hide this later on, and we have the all of the stuff right here for the thumbnail. So if you hide this, you'll see this, which is the background example. We're going to be using this for adding effects and testing out layers and stuff like that, overlays. So if we open up the Krunker thumbnail group right here, you'll see all these folders within that. 
Uh, the first one is arrows. These are the basic ones that I found, but they're pretty clean. I used to use these on the Daily Dose of Kronka videos. Next, we have borders. So this is what's going to go around the edge. So as you can see, all the different colors. I'll get back to that later. Oh yeah, by the way, everything in this pack is in alphabetical order. All right, so next we have color correction. These are the overlays for your background images. So as you can see, there's a few right here. The one I used in my last video was the contrast one. It makes the highs a lot brighter and also more deeper blacks, which is pretty nice. And then you have some different ones, like for example, party. All right, so if you want to change any of these ones, for example, let's change the pinky one. As you can see, that's the kind of brightness effect. But we're looking for the pink one, which is right here. So this last one, as you can see, it has the violet filter on. And all you got to do to lower that is just change the density. And by doing that, you can select how much of it you want on. It's pretty much the same step for each of these filters. For example, if you think this filter is a bit too dark, this one right here, as you can see, has a graph. So all you're going to do is just adjust this graph to how you want it. There we go. That looks, that looks quite nice, actually. But that's the basic effects of these color corrections. Again, just to hide everything, just click on this little eye icon right there, and it's all gone back to normal. Okay, next we have light effects. So light effects is what you're going to be using to kind of highlight something, I guess. As you can see, if you drag it to the edge right there, you can make a nice border. I actually use this effect with the borders in my Only For Content video, which you should definitely check out. And then also we have some rings right here. I use this one in my boom clap montage. You have some spotlight. And then this, you might not be able to tell the difference, but it's a gradient. Next, we have light overlays. These are all the different colors. Again, alphabetical order and color graded. This one is orange right there. And you got the purple one, red, and kind of gray white. If you think any of these are too bright, you can change the opacity. That's probably the best way to make it a bit darker. Okay, now we have some maps. So I've got a decent screenshot, I'd say, of every single map, um, as you can see right here. Now we have overlays. This is the most important folder. It has pretty much all the effects on. We have abstract fire, full size. This basically means it covers like the whole screen, lightning. And then we have some other ones here. So abstract ones, everything is named correctly or what I figured it was. We have some color effects right here. Uh, Meteor, this one looks really nice. These are the slashes ones. Then fire as well. Fire is pretty popular. A lot of YouTubers are using uh, these effects right here. And then the full size ones. So these are going to be like covering the whole screen pretty much. This is probably the most popular one. Speed lines. Same with the other speed lines that I have. Those are pretty cool. This is my favorite folder right here. I've included 20 lightning effects, which I think look really, really clean. By the way, if you ever you want to change a color of something, the easiest way to do it is by going to image adjustments and then hue slash saturation. And then as you can see, if you just change the hue, it's going to be changing to different colors. So if you want like a ready, ready type of effect right there, you can do whatever you want. All right. So now we have other. These are the ones that I didn't know what to put them because they're kind of special in their own way, I guess. And then, you know, you have some portals down here. And that covers everything in the overlays folder. So now let's go over to the particles folder. You got some fire embers right here. I really like this one. These muzzle flashes right here, they're from the official Krunga files. You can angle these by pressing Ctrl T and rotating or whatever. And you got some snow. Down at the bottom, you got all the sparkles effects. The renders folder is for Krunga specifically. I have these baseline renders of the Krunga characters. You don't have to use them. You can if you want. And then we have all the guns right here. I had to go in game and screenshot every single one of these. And then we have all the icons. This was pulled from the official Krunga mod pack. But yeah, those are all the icons and then logos. As you can see, season one, season two and season three. All right. And now we have textiles. So all these are custom made. So if we wanted to change, let's say this nice little pink red one right here. Got to double click on the FX logo right there. Color overlay, satin, inner glow. Um, inner glow is like really, really, it's a nice effect to add. I've heard that smoke is pretty popular on thumbnails. Obviously, you have some ring effects, which are more cartoony as well. This one is, this one looks really, really nice all the bottom. Um, it gives that kind of aesthetic to it. Finally, we have the social icons. Um, I don't know who the hell is using Facebook in 2020, but yeah, I have that. And then YouTube, Steam, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. And that is pretty much the whole pack. This took a lot of time to make. And if you like the pack, remember to like and subscribe. All right, so I'm just going to show you how to make a basic current thumbnail all the way that I would do it. We already have this file, which we made in Cinema 4D. And we're just going to move them over here like that. If you ever want to add effects to something, you just got to right click on the layer then go to blending options. And over here is everything you can change and adjust for the image. One of the best effects that looks really, really clean is adding an inner glow. It has a nice sunlight effect, I guess, on the image. And then we're going to add a drop shadow. And I would also recommend changing the angle depending on what your character is at. Now, if you think he's a bit undersaturated or whatever, image adjustments and then vibrance and turn up the saturation a bit. So we're going to give him, let's say plus 12. 
And of course, this is a thumbnail, so we're going to need text. All right, so if you're wondering what the official Kronger text is called, it's called FFF Forward. I'm going to leave a download link in the description in case you want to use that. We'll just call this example for now. One of the easiest ways to create depth is by putting text behind a render. So right here, if we put this down here. So if you want to create the exact Kronger text, I'll show you how to do that right now. So you're going to want to add a drop shadow, make the distance like 10, make this 90. And we're going to go to gradient overlay right here. And we'll put this one to 49 and this one to 50 or 51. It doesn't really matter. Then we need to put one of them white. It's usually the top one. And the other one, just a slight offset of white. I think that looks good. And then we're just going to add a stroke and put this to the outside. And then finally, we want bevel and emboss. You want to set this on chisel hard or chisel soft. Decrease the size just a bit. So we'll put that on four. And as you can see, that looks a lot better already. I would also recommend just making it closer together. So the easiest way to do that is by clicking on the character icon. If you don't have that, you can go to window and then make sure the character is selected. And then by dragging this slider right here, you can bring the text closer and further away. Okay, and right here, I would like to add, let's say an arrow, all right? So we have all these arrows to select from. I'm gonna be using this one right here. And as you can see, now I have an arrow. Let's point it at him. And let's say I want this to be a blue arrow. I just go to image adjustments, hue slash saturation, drag it over to a nice blue. And I think it doesn't stand out enough. So I'm going to add a drop shadow. And there we go. Just like that. Nice little drop shadow. If I wanted to add curve to this text, I would go to, I, would, I press control T and then click this right here. And as you can see, you can tilt it up and down. Just one more thing you can do with the text is by going to edit and then transform perspective. And as you can see this, it creates like a, a depth of field effect. So for the border, we're going to be using, let's let's use a nice, nice red border for this, I think. It goes with his outfit. And then as for the light effects, let's make it so it looks like he's going through the portal. Then we have light overlays. Again, I'm going to be using a red one because it looks really, really clean. I might lower the opacity of this just a bit. And then let's say I don't want evacuation, right? So I'm going to just select. Let's go with, oh yeah, shipyard looks really nice. And I'm going to transform this and flip it horizontally. So it has more of the image on this side. Now for the overlays. So I'm going to be using this one. All you got to do is just drag it up or you can control C, control V. Let's move it behind everything. Again, you can change the uh, type of blend the layer. As for the smoke, I want it to be in a background effect. So I'm just going to paste this right here. This is the front layer. So it's going to be in front of everything. And that looks really nice, actually. And then finally, we can add, uh, I don't know, let's just, let's just throw in a YouTube effect right here. And I think for this one, I'm going to add, let's add an outer glow. All right. And we're going to use normal, put this to white. And yeah, that looks pretty clean. And finally, once you have all this done, we're going to be using some color correction. The best way to do this is by dragging this to the top and then let's choose. Hmm, let's see. Let's see. Well, that one looks that one looks really nice, actually, with all the red. I'm going to be using this one right here, the curve effect. So this just adds a bit of contrast and also makes the whites more vibrant so you can see it better. Also, you can create a nice effect by blurring out the background. So if we just go to our map section right here and then shipyard. So now the layer is selected, you can go to filter, blur and then Gaussian blur. Then you can choose the amount you want it blurred. So I'm going to put it. I think three looks good. And there you go. Now you have a nice blurred background. OK, so once everything's completed, you can export it by going to file export quick export as png and then we're just going to call it thumbnail save it and then as you can see this is a one megabyte youtube allows a maximum file size of two megabytes this is completely fine and just like that it's completed i'm pretty sure that is everything i hope this video helped i hope your thumbnails look a bit better than before and i'll see you next time